Welcome back subscribers and welcome new viewers. All right, this is number seven viewer request. And today it's going to be Chiron in Sagittarius or the ninth house. Because so any of you who have a Sagittarius Chiron or a Chiron in the ninth house, because the ninth house is the house of Sagittarius, the natural house of Sagittarius. All right. And I want to thank each and every one of you who like, share, and sub have subscribed to my channel because that assists all of my videos getting out there and circulating for each and every individual, just like you who is searching for these answers for themselves. So thank you all so very much. And if you don't already know, those of you who would like a copy of what I will be reading, just please send me an email. My email address and all the information, and if any of you would like your natal wheel done, or you would like me to do an interpretation of your natal wheel, I absolutely, I would love to do that. So also leave me an email and my email address is in the drop down box below with all the information for what I would need to do your wheel for those of you who are interested. All right. So Chiron and Sagittarius and the ninth house. In the ninth house, we begin to expand our mental and phil philosophical horizons, excuse me. We pursue our special interests and search for the patterns of meaning in our personal life experience. We broaden our understanding of life through traveling, experiencing, or studying other cultures, their religions, and their mythology. With Chiron as co-ruler of this house and sign, its themes are strongly expressed here. With Chiron and Sagittarius or the ninth house, the driving force of our life is of a religious nature. Although it might not appear so at first sight. Often our inherited religious framework does not suit our inner needs and we must travel a long and sometimes a lonely path in search of our own individual meaning and purpose in life. Sometimes this search is literalized and we become great travelers. We feel healed and nourished by making pil pilgrimages to shrines or holy places and we also enjoy the food, music, and customs of other cultures. Mankind had, has always undertaken ritual journeys of healing, whether to grand churches and famous sacred sites, or simply to commune with a favorite tree. We may have recurring dreams or inner images of sacred places to which we can return in our imagination. We also feel replenished by communion with nature, particularly in wild areas. Oh, that's neat. With this Chiron placement, we might have been raised in a foreign culture or in one where our religion is not recognized. We perhaps feel persecuted by our peers for our beliefs. We could live in a country where a cultural transition is taking place. Our parents might be foreigners, exiles, or hold religious beliefs that set us apart from others. Okay. And again, I am going to... Okay, no, this looks like it's... it's um, 
I need to take my sweater off really quick. I am really warm. So just one moment. Okay, there we go. All right. Okay. One woman with Chiron in Sagittarius in the first house and conjunct the ascendant had several hair raising experiences while traveling alone. Reflecting on this later, she felt she had almost deliberately exposed herself to danger to see whether God would come to her aid. She was testing whether he was there and on her side. Although she had an indefinable, excuse me, <laughs> that's not the right word. <laughs> Let me do that again. <laughs> she was testing whether he was there on her side. Although she had an indefinable faith in quote, something, she was brought up by parents who were both atheists and had, therefore, to make this interconnection without their help. With Chiron and Sagittarius or the ninth house, we may feel wounded by God for some reason. Perhaps our parents fought over religious issues. Okay, I want to stop and say something. I'm being called to say something uh, that could be important for someone. Okay, this sentence that said that you might feel wounded by God. Okay, so that's exactly what I'm talking about when um, having to do with any, not just Chiron, but any of our planet's when we were birthed, those specific frequencies were coming down to earth and to you specifically when you were being birthed. So that's what it's going to give you. Whether you have any certain specific experiences yet or not, that's where it comes from, is that frequency of this Chiron is going to give you the feeling that you, some of you, not necessarily all of you, but this is one of what you might feel wounded by God. And you, that's Chiron. That's Chiron. So now you know, for those of you that have been having that feeling, and then even with that feeling, then when we don't know it, we call out for an experience to, to us that will give us that wounded by God experience, specifically for you who have Chiron. But we all do this with with our north and the south node of the moon as well. The south node of the moon as well. So, and other planets, whatever they are, in the specific houses. So, that's very important because there's no one to blame. There's no one to blame because it starts in our own chart when we are born. And then again, we, because of that frequency of Chiron coming to you, you then are going to call certain situations to you that will bring out that feeling if you don't already just feel that. And maybe both. It depends. It just depends. All of you are different in that area, but that's where it comes from. So, okay. We will be very sensitive to ideas such as original sin and may believe that when things go wrong, it means that God is angry with us, which now you know that's not correct. God or the universe or whoever, whatever religion you have or whatever belief you have, about a higher power. It's not that at all. So you can let that go. You can let that go. And there's no one to blame. No one who has ever done anything to you that brought out this. They have their own chart. They have their own stuff to deal with and take responsibility for in that area. But 
here it is. So again, this is very beautiful. This is exactly why I love astrology and specifically reading these things for each and every one of you who have these specific issues because it clears it up right then and it frees you. It frees you. It frees each and every one of us. Okay. That's very beautiful. Okay. I'm going to read that again. It's very important. Very, very important. We will be very sensitive to ideas such as original sin and may believe that when things go wrong, it means that God is angry with us. We might have a heritage of religious conflict or confusion to come to terms with. Unlike Freud, Jung believed that the religious instinct and the search for meaning and right connection with the gods was a natural human drive and could not be merely reduced to its biological counterparts or explained away as pathological. With Chiron in the ninth house or Sagittarius, this religious instinct often awakens very young. From childhood onwards, we ponder deeper questions concerning the meaning of life and may never receive satisfactory answers. I have met several people with this placement who with childhood, excuse me, who in childhood came to the conclusion that grown-ups are stupid. Kids can be very, very much more intelligent than some grown-ups. That is absolutely true. With Chiron in the ninth house or Sagittarius, we will usually have a deeply devotional sense, a passionate zeal which longs to devote itself to something, literally anything, can become our God if this religious instinct is misplaced. Okay, and I also want to say that the natural, okay, Sagittarius and the ninth house is higher mind, higher truth. So truth in the highest sense, so in the highest sense of, of God, of the universe, whatever this is, this um, force, very intelligent force. That some call God, you whatever you call that, but you're searching and seek and you shall find. Seek and you shall find. We may, just like right now, <laughs> okay, we may unwittingly defy food education or even the latest cult movie and pursue the object of our devotion with fervent enthusiasm. However, the divine discontent which our wound cannot be satisfied in this way, a useful question might be where or who is God, or is the God or goddess in my life? Our devotional drive could take us into perilous waters if we embrace causes or follow spiritual paths where our questions and personal beliefs, which is Gemini and the third house, are swept aside in a wave of fervor. Worse, if our God image is to pro, is projected on to a guru or leader, we may then be vulnerable to exploitation and psychological rape.
as Chiron often indicates, where we meet our early wounds I'm sorry, let me, I didn't put the right emphasis on, I apologize. I, my speaking today has something to, to, um, to be improved upon. <laughs> so I truly apologize. As Chiron often indicates where we meet our early wounds, unless we have done some homework resolving our early parental issues, we might fall foul to them when our devotional energy is mobilized. A little Geminian rationality and lightheartedness may usefully balance our tendency to make zealous commitment to an to an erstwhile mentor or spiritual teacher. He or she may turn out to be a merely glorified father or mother figure. With Chiron and Sagittarius or the ninth house, we could become inflated with a feeling that we have found the truth and the desire to tell everyone else about it may wreak havoc in our personal lives. We may even limit our friendships to those who hold the same beliefs as ourselves. One can see shades of Gemini here. And they're saying Gemini because um, Gemini opposes Sagittarius in the third house. In the either or stance, if I have the truth, then I am right and you are wrong. I am doing you a favor by trying to convince or convert you because then you too can join the elect who know. You cannot be right because that means I am wrong. The importance of the religious question for this placement is illustrated in the life of a woman I shall call her Diane, who has Chiron. Okay, I'm going to fast forward this. This is a very specific, and I'm going to keep it general because it will be too long, and I don't want to run over as well. So again, if you want to read these specifics, send me an email, and I will send you a copy of this. With Chiron and Sagittarius, or the ninth house, we might suffer because our sense of vision and possibility as we often have difficulty with commitment and finding a suitable direction in life. The arrows of our intuition fly everywhere, but we may be dismayed to discover that things do not happen by themselves and feel reluctant to take active steps to make things happen. Like Chiron, we might be shot down by others. The balloons of our enthusiasm and overextension of ourselves may be pricked many times before we accept the gap between what we can be made to happen and what cannot. It may cost us great pain to let go of a vision or hope. And if our whole sense of individuality and identity is bound up with it, we could then feel as though we are dying. However, with this placement, life often brings exactly such a crisis. If we can let go, we discover that not only does our vision remain alive, but we are in fact in a healthier relationship with it, not driven by it or identified with it. The image of Chironian, Ch 
Chiron's cave on the dark side of Mount um, Pelion, Pe Pelion is an evocative one as it points to an important aspect of the journey of those with this placement. With Chiron and Sagittarius or the ninth house, we cannot get away with a sense of vision or meaning that excludes our suffering. Okay, so you will. Well, which makes sense. And that is what Chiron is, the wounded healer. So you become wounded first, then at, through the experiences and taking what you have learned through those painful experiences is how you heal yourself. And so what they're saying is you will be wounded. Okay. All right. At least now, and a lot of you probably already have, and you can look back and see where you were, were wounded and where it came from and why it happened. And now you have information that you didn't have before. So you don't have to go through those experiences again. Necessarily, necessarily. Okay, so uh, let's see. We need a personal philosophy of life which can embrace contradictions and different points of view without splitting them apart and setting them against each other. Finding this may be a difficult task if we were raised within a traditional Judeo-Christian framework where the devil is the enemy of God and the true faith, but not really supposed to be part of it. The feminine image of deity is likewise split. On the side of the good is motherhood, virgin or otherwise, while other feminine aspects are ignored or condemned. Women with Chiron in Sagittarius or the ninth house often have to struggle to shrug off negative attitudes resulting from the inherited Judeo-Christian stereotype that presents women as evil and dangerous creatures who bring the temptations of the flesh and lure men away from their quest for enlightenment. They often have a natural wisdom way beyond their age and life experience, and it may initially be difficult for them to recognize or value it. Western cultures, for many centuries, most women have had no transpersonal image of a wise woman who has not rejected her sensual self. Apart from the Virgin Mary, women have had no divine image to worship, no holy name to call upon. If you are a woman with Chiron and Sagittarius or the ninth house, you might find it enriching to study the storage, stories and images of goddesses in the great religions of the world. Both men and women with this placement are especially sensitive to images of the divine and need an appropriate natural expression for their urge to worship and pay homage. With Chiron and Sagittarius or the ninth house, we may develop a tendency to see personal meaning in everything. Although we, we may be inspired and energized, we may get into difficulty when the meanings we find do not tally with what others find meaningful. We need to learn that meaning is not an absolute but a subjective quality. Our facility for finding meaning can also be a defense against suffering. We may compensate for underlying feelings of despair, hopelessness, and depression by strained attempts to appear positive and outgoing. Alternatively, with this placement, we sometimes have difficulty finding meaning in anything at all. 
Underneath, however, we could be harboring an unconscious and unfulfillable vision or hope, perhaps from childhood, like Chiron's unhealable wound. Allowing this into consciousness can bring a great sense of relief. For example, a man who had Chiron in the ninth house in Cancer became obsessed with his family's past history. He scrutinized the lives of his ancestors, suffered over their tragedies, and felt a burdensome sense that he was supposed to be doing something about it. He eventually realized that he was trying to take on the burden of the family's unconscious pain and heal it. He felt that he had already disappointed his parents' high hopes for him. Ninth house. And before he had come to terms with that, he embarked on a self-appointed but unconscious mission. Again, Chiron in the, in the ninth house. To feel the pain of his family's past on their behalf. Many people with this placement receive a powerful vision of other dimensions at some time in their lives. They are infused with a strong sense of purpose and meaning, sometimes through the use of drugs and often during a strong transit of Chiron. So you want to check and see when, let's see, because they're talking about, that sentence was talking about transiting Chiron. So either transiting Chiron, it depends on what is in your, where Chiron is and what um, zodiac sign it is. So if it's Chiron in the ninth house, your Chiron is in the ninth house, I would say if Chiron comes back and goes over your Chiron and goes through your ninth house, that's an important time or opposing, squaring, okay? And then if, it's, if you have Chiron in Sagittarius, I would say anytime transiting Chiron uh, goes back into Sagittarius and will go over your Chiron or close to your Chiron or, which is conjunct, or opposing Chiron opposing your Sagittarius Chiron, which would be Chiron in Gemini, and, or let's see, and then squaring is going to be, Chiron is squaring, those of you who have Chiron in Sagittarius, right now, Chiron, I believe, is still in Pisces, and so that is squaring. Any of you who have Chiron in Sagittarius, natally, transiting Chiron, is in Pisces right now. So you want to check the, and that squares you, yours. So it doesn't go over, it squares. But you want to check the degrees of your Chiron and if it's within or when it was within seven degrees of squaring your Chiron. So you check both degrees. And when it, that transiting, because it might have already happened because we have been in um, Chiron has been in Pisces for several years now. I don't exactly know how long right now, but you check that. And then I believe I did. No, maybe not. Well, anyway, you can either look up Chiron, your natal Chiron squaring transiting Chiron, and you can just up anyone, or you can Leave me a message, leave me a comment if that, and you want to know more about that. And I will find it in this book and do a general reading. And I can also send, I will then also send you that, that, uh, the write-up of it. Okay, we're still good with time. All right. Okay, so let's continue on. Okay, so. Later they may suffer terribly unable to continue believing 
what they once believed. They feel intense frustration, knowing there is something inside them which they want to give, but they cannot find a way to do it, and nor do they know what it is. Often, however, with Chiron in Sagittarius or the Ninth House, the natural sense of expansiveness and optimism is blocked in order to facilitate an expansion of consciousness and inner understanding. So meaning you go through the pain first before so that you can have the experiences necessary that Chiron is here to teach you and you to learn from and take those positives that you've learned, then you will have that natural sense of expansiveness and optimism come to you after that. Okay. Chiron in this house or sign may introvert the Jupiterian qualities. Okay, and they're talking about Jupiter because Jupiter is the natural planet of Sagittarius and the ninth house. Okay, so let me read that again. Chiron in this house or sign may introvert the Jupiterian qualities. Okay, yeah, introvert, okay. Yes, that's just what it said in the sentence before, which I explained. So you will, Ju Jupiter is the benefic, is, is the benefactor, and it expands whatever it is next to, or that's the planet. So whatever feelings or um, whatever planet it's next to. But anyway, in this case, they're talking about Chiron because it's, it's, it is um, when your Chiron is in Sagittarius or the ninth house. It also has energies naturally of the planet Jupiter as well, because again, that's the natural house of Jupiter and the natural sign of Jupiter is Sagittarius. So again, yes, it's saying that you, you will first be experiencing the negative, the, the wounding. Then after that, then the Jupiter, the benefic will come upon you and you will, you will be able to experience the positive. Okay. And that's where they're getting that from is because of Jupiter. That's why they said that. Okay. Vision may be more a quality of consciousness than a possibility that we must do something about. And the compulsion to externalize and go upwards and outwards must perhaps be resisted in order to allow this to happen. Ultimately, the gift of this placement is the capacity to devote ourselves to life as an expression of the divine, here and now. Once we trust its presence, we no longer need to pursue it. This trust may be hard won with this placement. We periodically fall into a dualistic view where some things are sacred and some are not like the twins of Gemini, because again, Gemini opposes Sagittarius. The third house opposes the ninth house, which is the natural home of Gemini. The frenzy of our search may resume only to have to be relinquished time and time again. Okay. That's all I have for you. All right. And we finished within the proper time, so that's great. Okay. So, if you have any questions, again, if you want me to send you a copy, I would be happy to. Just send me an email. My email address is in the drop-down box below. Okay. Until next time.